This is something I call the true history of transformations of functions with Sograites and Amphibianes. You will play the part of Sograites. And Amphibianes plays the part of himself. Through painstaking research, I have traced the beginnings of the transformation of functions to ancient Greece. I have discovered a lost manuscript about the greatest philosopher of all time, though long since forgotten. At one time, he was so great that people called him Socrates. This manuscript describes a dialogue between Socrates and one of his students, Amphibianes, who was always hopping all over him with questions. Throughout the following reconstructed dialogue, Notice how Socrates employs the Socratic method, by which the student is brought to knowledge through queries such as, what's so great about that? Remember, you are playing the part of Socrates, and Amphibianes is playing the part of himself. I will help you with the Socrates part, but please speak along with me. Oh, great Socrates, could you enlighten me on the functions of metamorphosis? Perhaps you mean the transformation of functions. Metamorphosis is what occurred when you transitioned from an egg to a tadpole and then to a frog, Lily Hopper. Yeah, but transportation sounds so pedestrian, and I don't walk. I always hop. So what do you seek to know about the transformation of functions? I seek to know how to transform any function using any operation, anytime, anywhere, any place. Please help me. Oh, great, so great please, 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 please. Certainly, Pollywog. What are your three favorite functions? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner! Oh, you mean math functions. First, I take f of x equals x squared. Excellent choice. Why? Because all meals should be square. And then I take, say, f of x equals x cubed. That's odd. Why? Because it's the same, only different. And finally, I pick f of x equals 2 to the x. Powerful. Why? I already told you. It's the same, only different. Now I know why they call you a wise man. So how can I transform those functions? First, why don't you graph them to see what they look like? Why again? Okay, how do you do that? First, you must select a domain. Every function requires one. How about my pond? It's my favorite domain. A domain is a set of inputs for a function. What numbers do you feel comfortable with? That's easy. A one and a two. Why? I love to waltz. Zero is nice, too, because it looks like my eyes. Is that enough? Why not pick a couple of negative numbers? Like my aunt and Uncle Toad? There are a couple of negative numbers and really cold-blooded. Oh, you mean number numbers. How about negative one and negative two? Guess why I picked them? Don't tell me. I bet because they are the same, only different. Okay, put those numbers into your functions and see what you get, and draw a sketch of each. Not sure how to do all that. Give me a hint. Organize. Yes, I know eyes are organs. Oh, I see. How about if I use a table? It's good I picked easy numbers. I can do the calculations on my flippers. I'd come up with something like this. You may want to try this on your own and pause the video. And the graphs? Look good. Organize. Ha! <laughs> Still like that one. I'll connect the dots. It looks slicker. These will be the graphs we will transform. Why not call them parent graphs? How about tadpole graphs? That makes more sense. Then we can call the transformation frogs. As you wish, Crokester. Now, we have a school of tadpoles, so let's create an army of frogs. How do we start? Good use of group terms. Let's begin with addition and subtraction. Suppose you had the functions g of x equals x squared minus 2, h of x equals x cubed plus 1, and j of x equals 2 to the x minus 1. What would happen? What would what happened to i? I wonder. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, let's look at the new tables in c. Again, you may want to try this on your own. What do you notice? 
it's obvious for any function f of x plus c just add c to the corresponding y value so what happens to the graphs hmm let me see again you may want to try this on your own by pausing the video first ah shifty the frogs are shifted up or down by c depending upon whether it is added or subtracted I bet the same thing would happen if I added or subtracted before I applied the functions, yes? You tell me. You like making me do all the work, don't you? Okay, I'll try g of x equals the quantity x minus 2 squared, h of x equals the quantity x plus 1 cubed, and j of x equals 2 to the quantity x minus 1, because they are the same, only different. I know. But how are you going to do the calculations now? Using negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 forces you to compute values of expressions like negative 4 squared and 2 to the negative third. Hmm, how can I slither out of this one? Hey, I can use a domain of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in g of x, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 in h of x, and negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 in j of x so that I can still do the operations on my favorite numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Slippery, aren't I? Yes, I see you do like to waltz around a bit. But what's so great about that? Don't you see? The tables come out looking like this. Again, you may want to try it on your own. So the frogs do end up being shifted only in the opposite direction from what I suspected kind of flies in the face of logic spot on why do you suppose it's the opposite direction hey no need to be thin-skinned so i have a few spots what of it it's obvious that the shift is in the opposite direction because i had to select a different domain to compensate before i did my calculations for example for g of x i selected a domain that is two greater than my favorite numbers because I knew I was going to subtract 2 before I did my calculations. What's next? How about negating your functions? Nougating? Sounds tasty. Oh, you mean like g of x equals the opposite of x squared, h of x equals the opposite of x cubed, and j of x equals the opposite of 2 to the x. Not so tasty. It's kind of bland. All the y values are negated. I won't even bother with the table. The frogs would look like this, simply flipped over the x-axis. What if you negated first? Okay, I might need a table for those so I don't get confused. So I want to consider g of x equals the quantity opposite of x squared, h of x equals the quantity of opposite x cubed, and j of x equals two to the quantity opposite x. Perhaps you could predict what will happen. Well, when we added and subtracted after we applied the functions, it resulted in a vertical shift. When we added or subtracted before we applied the functions, it was a horizontal shift. Negating after the function was applied resulted in a vertical flip, so I'm guessing the negating before the functions applied would result in a horizontal flip. Let's check out the tables in the corresponding graphs. And again, you can do this yourself ahead of time. That's odd. The first function looks just like the original. It's not odd. It's even whenever f of the opposite x equals f of x. What about h of x? It looks the same as if we flipped it over the x-axis. That's odd. Precisely. It's called odd whenever f of the opposite of x is equal to the opposite of f of x. Hey, I hit the nose on the head. The only thing left is multiplication and division. Problem is that multiplying and dividing by 1 won't tell me much. I'll have to use different numbers. Any suggestions? Why not try g of x equals 3 times x squared, h of x equals a half of x cubed, and j of x equals 2 times 2 to the x? Looks like I can still use my favorite domain values. Okay, the tables look like this. And the frogs look like this. Hey, I've got this one mastered. That's a stretch, Hophead. Precisely. If you multiply a function by a constant c, then the frog is stretched vertically by that factor.
What about the half? Well, it's stretched by a half. I'd rather say that it shrunk. So what do you suppose will happen if you multiply before applying the function? My guess is that it would stretch horizontally by the factor. However, I was wrong last time because I had to adjust my domain values so I could make my computation easier. I discovered that the functions did the opposite of what I expected. Is the same true in this case? You tell me. Boy, you don't give me a straight answer like any good teacher might do. You expect me to do it myself. Sometimes I wonder about you. Okay, let's consider the functions g of x equals the quantity 3x squared, h of x equals the quantity 1 half x cubed, and j of x equals 2 to the quantity 2x power. Wow, I really have to adjust my domain values. How do you do that? You tell me. Again, you may want to think about this. I have to use negative 2 thirds, negative 1 third, 0, 1 third, and 2 thirds for g of x, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4 for h of x, and negative 1, negative 1 half, 0, 1 half, and 1 for j of x. So the tables would look like this. And the frogs look like this. Hey, I was right. It's the opposite of what I expected. So when you multiply by a constant before you apply the function, the frog shrinks horizontally by that factor. And before you ask me, shrinking by a factor of half is really a stretch by a factor of two. What's so great about that? Don't you see? Now I can transform any function anytime. But what if there is more than one transformation, like g of x equals negative two times the quantity one fourth of the quantity x minus one, all squared, plus three? Back off, big guy. I feel like I'm up a tree without a paddle. Oh, wait. One thing that I've learned from you is that it's best to break a big problem into little ones. Looks like it's flipped over the x-axis because of the negative. It's stretched vertically by a factor of two and stretched horizontally by a factor of four. It's also shifted to the right one and shifted up three. How'd I do? As you'd say, you hit the nose on the head. So how would you graph it? One half at a time. First I'd flip, that's my favorite maneuver, of course. Then I'd do the stretchy, shrinky stuff. And finally I'd move the graphs, like this. Precisely. Oh, thank you, great Socrates. Now I can't wait to get back to my pad and practice some fraga. Fraga? Don't you mean yoga, Tadpole? No, function transformation yoga. Flip. Stretch, move, fraga, get it? And that is the true story of transformation of functions. Honest.